hello there you two. This is a kind of nice Sunday. Tomorrow's supposed to be like 70 degrees. It's uh <laughs> I'm actually out here I'm actually out here dodging the uh the rain clouds. You can see little blue patches here and there, but every one of them dark ones is producing rain. So I've just been kind of dodging them. I know you can call me a wimp, but I don't like getting my new motorcycles wet. I've got motorcycles to ride in the rain. It's not going to be my iron or or anything else. It's one thing to get caught in it. It's another thing to purposely go out in it. I'm way too anal with that stuff. That's a whole that's a whole another story. So what I wanted to do while I was out here just basically doing a microphone test. Hopefully this works, and I'm not telling the story to uh, no audio. But um, I'll tell you about a couple more. Uh, couple more motorcycle crashes. How about that? So somewhere around, well it was in 82. In 82 I, I bought myself a brand new uh, XL 500R. It was the first monolink um, suspended dual sport that uh, Honda sold. That was the year prior to the RFBC motor. It was actually a fantastic motorcycle. A really, jeez, I hate to think how many miles I put on it. It's very reliable. Um, nowadays standards probably didn't handle good. At the time, it was good. Um, it was fine with me. I went crazy on that thing. Anyway, I had a friend, a high school friend, that we rode together. Same guy that uh, was with me when Mount St. Helens went off. He was still riding a, an old 77 DT125. Well, he uh, he decided he needed one of those XL 500Rs, and he was uh, yeah, he was having a hard time, uh, you know, getting good employment and whatnot. So his, his dad helped him out, and I uh, came down to the shop I was working for and and purchased him one. Well, there ain't nothing more dangerous or it'll cause more trouble than a couple of guys on dual sports not a good not a good mix especially in the early 80s you you're pretty much free to go wherever the hell you want I mean there was uh, things were a lot different back in those days I've come up here before these dogs don't bite he, he, hey 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 don't bite nope nope no nipping now. Them dog bit me in my shoulder. You hit the, uh... Here I say, I've been up here before and they don't bite. He bit me right in the damn shoulder. But they got the, uh, what do you call it, pad? That gel shit. That's beautiful. This is where I came up and took the pictures of St. Helens. But, uh, anyway. So, need to say, we're a bunch of trouble. Got into all kinds of trouble. Nowadays, it would have been bad trouble. I mean, nobody even said anything. We just went, <laughs> went places you could never go, you know, down to port docks and all kinds of crazy shit. Well, as I've probably mentioned before, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm not bragging. I, I don't do this shit no more or nothing, but I used to wheelie everything. Gold wings, uh, everything. It was like, a, you know, I was the crazy kid, they called me. But anyway, uh... These XL500s, needless to say, just wheelie forever. And, um, so anyway, when he got his XL500, I don't know why, you know, some people just can't get that knack of, you know, he could pop a wheelie, but he couldn't ride a wheelie. And, um, but he would, uh, you know, days I was at work and he was out playing, he'd spend hours on hours practicing. I mean, over and over and over. So, he... We hadn't ridden in a while, and he gets together. And he's got his uh, got a little girlfriend with him. I she's I don't even remember the gal's name. I think she was a uh, you know like one of these one or two week girlfriend type things. You know now you are when you in your late teens. But uh, anyway, he brings his girlfriend along. He wants to go down to the port dock. It's the Longview, the port of Longview. And it was open. I mean, you just drive right in there. But uh, 
nothing illegal. I mean, it's just open back in those days. But um, so I'm just like, you know, why I, why the port docks out of nowhere? You know, I whatever. You know, we haven't gone there in a while. We used to go walking underneath the docks and and playing and stuff like that. So I thought, cool, I haven't been there a while, so we go. Well, that's where he'd been practicing. There was this new road that they had built, you know, for the semi-trucks and stuff to move things around. It was a road that wasn't there before. It was a nice, fresh road. And it was raised up a bit, you know. And uh, so anyway, there's this long straightaway on this thing, probably, I don't know, half a mile long. And he that's where he'd been practicing his wheelies. Well, the crazy thing is he'd been practicing practicing most of the wheelies with his girlfriend on the bike. Any of you guys that do wheelies know that when you have a passenger on the back, I mean, a, a, a good headwind will pick a dual sport up in the air. They just love the wheelie. They love the wheelie. With the weight of a passenger on the back, it's very, very easy to balance and, and ride a wheelie. Unbelievably easy to balance. But, uh, so that was his goal, was to show me that he can now ride a wheelie. And sure as shit, boom, he pulls it up and just boom, down he goes. And I thought, well, hell, this is cool as shit. Now I got somebody to, to wheelie with, you know. So we kind of wheelie side by side and we're looking at each other and, you know, touching feet and carrying on. And he's over trying to hit my kill switch and whatever else. <clears throat> and then when we come back, uh, he, he was on my right, I was on the left. And we're coming back, I'm on the right, he's on the left, and the road, you know, went straight, and then there was a set of railroad tracks that came across, where well, the road took an uphill turn and went to the right, you know, pretty steep and sharp. And um, we're going along, and I thought, okay, he's, he's playing some kind of a chicken, you know, he's wanting to see how far I'm going to go, he's gonna, he wants to maybe out wheelie me or, or ride a longer wheelie or whatever the case may be. So I hold out, hold out, hold out. You know, and of course, my left hand's free. You know, I, I'm pointing. You know, road's about to end. I, it, it, and it occurs to me at the last second, holy shit, he doesn't realize the road freaking turns, you know? So I'm like pointing, pointing, pointing. So finally, it's like, you're at this point. I got to come down, you know? So boom, I come down and whip. You know into the turn very similar to this but a lot sharper very similar how it just doof. and it'd be like on a set of railroad tracks where the road raised way up where them tracks were well he never seemed to turn so when i went down and turned in front of him he runs into me somehow or another him and his girlfriend stay on that on that xl 500 r and end up in the turn and you know went on up well needless to say it took the damn handlebar right out right out from under me Bwah! I hit the deck Oof, go flying off this rocky cliff bangling down and boom right onto the tracks look at this all wet it's gonna fry my motorcycle so down I go tumbling and uh, you know I when it's all said and done the dust settles my XR is laying or XL is laying on the tracks you know, and I, I'm laying kind of with, you know, the beams kind of stick out the edge of the track. But I'm kind of laying in between a couple of those things and they're, how they're pointy. It's kind of, you know, in my back. So I get up cussing. i like, you stupid son of a bitch. You know, I'm pointing and screaming that, you know, the road ends. And he just, like, looking at me with this shit-eating smile and just keeps going, you know. And ultimately takes my ass out could have taken himself out and that cute little girlfriend he had too. I mean, none of us are wearing, I was wearing like a Letterman type jacket. And um, it was actually a motorcycle one. I remember it was, uh, it was so ugly. It was this kind of a silky yellow with orange sleeves. And it was an O'Neill. I don't know if O'Neill even does any motorcycle accessories anymore, but they made shirts and all kinds of stuff, gloves. And, Anyway, I was wearing one of those. And uh, so anyway, I'm just cussing. The whole way out of the port docks, I'm just cussing. You know, my bike's all twisted and scratched and bars are bent, the fender's all, you know, tweaked and scratched. Ah, I'm just furious, you know. This kid has no money. I mean, it, this is something I'm absolutely gonna have to fix by myself, you know. 
back in those days, you didn't have to have full coverage insurance. I think I paid cash for the thing or something. I, you know, bikes weren't expensive back then. But uh, anyway, I'm madder than hell. We come up to a stoplight, and uh, similar to the heavy glove when I crashed on that twisty, bumpy-ass road against the sloop, we come up to, uh, well, oddly enough, it was Industrial Way. I work off of Industrial Way now. It was that light at the foot of the Longview Rainier Bridge, heading into Long, heading into uh, Longview. It's uh, Oregon Way, on the corner of Oregon Way and uh, an Industrial Way. Maybe there's an old camper place that was on the corner. Now it's a Starbucks and something else. And uh, I'm sitting there and I like my my arms like really heavy. And I'm like, what the hell's going on, you know? And I'm looking and blood's just freaking pouring out of out of the bottom of my my elbow with this coat just pouring and uh i'm like oh jesus christ you know here we go again you know it's only been you know a couple years since i you know tried to take a freaking finger off finger off so we pull over into this uh camper and canopy sales things i remember the canopies being on these racks it was a big thing to buy truck canopies back in those days and um pulled in big hole in my sleeve I fold it over and there's the nastiest huge ass gouge and I didn't see any bone or anything but it was just flabbing skin apparently I had landed on my elbow and uh, just opened open my elbow right up just horrifically nasty so I tell him you know this it's like midnight, one o'clock in the morning or something. You know, oddly enough, I didn't think about this. That was about the same time I crashed on that little twisty road. Something about being with that boy and midnight is not a good thing. So we go to the hospital and, you know, they, they gave me some diaper looking thing to wrap me up. I had to sit in the waiting room and they're kind of getting, you can see that my friend and his girlfriend are are kind of bored sitting there well I'm you know now it's starting to freaking hurt you know you know at first nothing like that hurts you know well, now the pain's coming in you know and this diaper or whatever the hell it was it gave me is just soaking wet you know I shit it's amazing I had to get lightheaded from all the blood I was losing so uh, anyway they called me in and I remember you know how they get the old cleaner out and the brush and it's almost like they want to teach you a lesson for riding a motorcycle and crashing. They're like scrubbing the crap out of there, picking and poking and carrying on. And, you know, it's hurting like hell. They keep poking you with uh, shots and stuff. But uh, anyway, I get all sewed up and they got me in this sling deal. You know what? I got this backwards. It was my left arm. I did another thing with my right arm, but it was my left arm. I do remember this, because yeah, there's a reason I remember this. So, when I get up to go in there, I said, go up to my parents' house and get my dad's truck. And uh, his dad was a sheriff. You don't want to go knocking on his door saying, oh, we're out at midnight, we crash in the Ford docks. This old man would freak out, so his dad had a truck, but you wouldn't go ask for that. But uh, anyway, he goes, okay, I'll, I'll go get it. So. I get down, they sew me all up, they got me in this uh, sling kind of a thing. I step out, out into the lobby again and, well, my friend and his girlfriend's gone. So I thought, oh, well they must be out with the bikes, because we parked outside the emergency room. So, uh, they must be out there trying to load them things up, or at least load mine up, because obviously I'm, I'm not going to be, and I knew when I walked out of there I wasn't going to be riding a motorcycle. So. Uh, out the door I go, I step outside, it's, you know, probably, I don't know, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning by now. There's nothing outside that emergency room but one beat and scratched up 1982 XL500R. My friend, his girlfriend, and his motorcycle are gone. There was no cell phones or anything back then, I couldn't text him, I couldn't call him. You know, I can't call his parents' house. This old man would answer the phone and freak out on me. So, I'm stuck. 
so I'm like, holy shit, what am I going to do? You know, I had this like little baggie of stuff that they gave me for, I don't know, changing dressing or doing whatever. So I got this shit, my arm's in a sling. And it's about 3 o'clock in the morning, colder than, holy hell. And they hacked my sleeve up when they took the coat off. So I've got the coat back on, but, you know, the sleeve is just dangling. So I have to figure out how the hell I'm going to get home. I'm not going to call my parents. Oh, good Lord. You know, it's just, I would, not that they would freak out. My dad would definitely come down and get me. He just wouldn't be very happy about it. And I don't want to bother him with that kind of stuff. So I take my arm out of that sling and I rode that goddamn motorcycle back up to my parents' house. Parked it in the, parked it in the garage and my room was downstairs. There's like a living room and a, there's a bunch of rooms down. Actually, there's a couple of bedrooms downstairs. But, but anyway, I, my room was there. I kind of slithered in the back door, went to bed. Crazy shit, huh? But man, that could have. That's one of those that you always think back on. How it could have been so so much different. I was thinking about that road. I thinking about on that road. I think that's where uh, one of my customers. Oh shit! You know what? I drove by that son of a bitch. He just bought a brand new 2014 Spider from us. And they said he lived off of off of Plumundin. And I just seen that sign. I was going. I know that road. Anyway, I, I drove by a spider at the post office and waved at him. Not even thinking, I forgot that that guy lives up here. He wants to, I don't have the spider now, but it's at, at the shop. It was pouring down rain, I left that sucker. I rode home with, with my wife in the cage. <laughs> I rode to work in the rain, that was enough. But, eh, going along here, I'm gonna have to go. So, anyway, that's one of those stories that uh, sticks with you forever and you look back on and, and think about, you know, how bad that could have been. That could have been really, really bad. Uh, you know, it was bad for me. It, it could have ended for me a whole lot worse going off a, it was probably about a 20 foot drop off down onto them railroad tracks. But uh, I don't know how I came out any better than, or, or not any worse than what I was. But, uh, man, I think, uh, I don't remember what they were wearing, but that, that young girl didn't have a lot of clothes on either. And it was colder than hell. I don't know how girls can handle that shit when they're young. But that's all about, you know, looking, looking hot and sexy, I guess. But yeah, it could have been really ugly for both of us. Just one of those things that you look back on. Well, that one wasn't my fault. I mean, granted, I was, you know, riding a wheelie alongside my buddy. <laughs> in the middle of the night which wasn't very smart so you know I put myself in that position I guess you could say and I should have you know let off before I had to in the turn you know that stupid pride thing you have as a kid anyway that's another little crash story oh, I've got lots of crash stories lots of motorcycle stories if you like these things I'll keep them coming well, it looks like the weather's getting a little reliable now, so maybe I'll, I'll buzz around and do something else here. So Anyway, I made an 18-minute vlog here that I'm going to have to chop up that I hate having to do. So I'm going to have to let you go. We'll see ya. Thanks for watching now. Bye-bye.